Hi, today we are kicking off a new series called the EAC 3D Print Show or the EAC Printing News or the EAC Added Manufacturing Show. We don't know for sure what we're going to end up naming this in the end. So if you have any ideas, questions or comments, please put them in the comments section below. Um, also, everything we're going to be talking about today, we'll be linking to them in the doobly-doo. So please expand that out if you want to dig in any deeper to any of the topics we cover. So I'm Anthony Byro. I'm with EAC Product Development Solutions. Right here we have Lauren Aidy. She is the guru of all things additive manufacturing and 3D printing at EAC Product Development Solutions. And today we want to talk about a few different things. Some industry news, some helpful tips, and some exciting things that might be happening with the uh, industry and products that EAC offers in the 3D printing space. So without any further ado, Lauren, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, glad to. Um, so industry news. I actually have a topic I would like to talk about sure. unless you have one. Go can ahead. I, I can go? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I don't know if you've seen it or if anyone out in the internet verse has seen it, but UC Berkeley has come up with a new printer that they call the Replicator. Yes. And I know you're a Star Wars person. I grew up on Star <laughs> Trek, so yes. maybe chuckle a little bit. Yes. Um, they call it the Replicator, and it is a new way of 3D printing using photosensitive resin. So similar to a product like the um, Form 2 by Form Labs, which is one of the printers you actually sell. Yep. You're an expert in. It is. Um, but it does it a little different and uh, kind of mind-blowingly. It does. Um, the traditional methods were, as people are used to, like the FDM, SLA, DLP, um, are building apart. What, what are all those letters? That, that, that's, <laughs> that's a lot of acronyms. Fused deposition modeling. So it's, is that like the little it's like a, a um, hot, hot glue plastic? Gun. Yes, okay. exactly. Um, SLA is stereo lithography. That's a form too. It is okay. using um, a photo polymer resin that is cured with a UV laser. Okay, um, so build apart layer laser by beams layer. and goo, yes. magic, if yes. you will. Yes. Right. Um, so th those traditional methods cure apart layer by layer, whereas the replicator um, cures the part using a resin, but it's kind of like a projector that cures with the video picture, projecting it into the Yeah, goo. so I saw a video. I saw a video. Yeah. We'll, we'll put it on screen here, where it just kind of rotates and it it varies the intensity of light coming from a super strong projector. Yes. And literally magic, not like joking. It's kind of like out of thin air. It's all of a appears. sudden you just have a part. <laughs> yes. It's really fantastic. So when I first saw that video, all I could think about is what 3D printing and additive manufacturing will be able to do mm -hmm. when they take that technology get it to a point where it can be commercialized yes. and bring resolution like you know the form labs form 2 3d printer yep. to this replicator yeah like at that point i would put one on my kitchen counter and say hey make me a screwdriver because i need to <laughs> tighten a screw on a hinge you know right like, which is one of the things that they made in the video too. that's yeah it, it's it's crazy i'm really excited to see what happens there because it's a a space with the photosensitive printing that I've never, never seen anyone do before. It was very exciting. Yes. Um, anything else from an industry side? I know you and I in the hallway in passing had recently talked about CAD software, mm -hmm. kind of getting more on board yep. with the 3D printing. What have you been seeing lately? Yeah, and it really depends on the type of printer you have, but there's a lot of integration now with CAD and 3D printers, so it makes it a lot easier to send your model to a printer. So once you model up, get it ready to yep. actually go boop yep. and print. Okay. And especially with the new release of Creo 6.0, um, there's a lot, a lot of new advancements with the software to make it easier for you to design your part for printing. So um, when you say advancements, what do you... So um, they made advancements to the 3D lattice features that you can build in your part for support. So, okay, so you're talking like these yep. these things support or on the inside? On the inside. Okay. So kind of like this guy here where it shows the lattice feature on the inside. Oh, so the, the hollowing out, the lightweight yep. kind of material. So you're not using up like 
tons of material. Correct. Saves okay. on material use. Okay. Yep. And then there's also um, some features that help you to orient your part. So when you talk about minimizing supports, I get that because oftentimes in 3D printing, there may be little points and then you have to clean up mm -hmm. more, more stuff yep. on your model. Yeah. What, what's so important about the orientation? So when you orient a part a certain way, it's going to affect the way it comes out in the print. So there's a lot of um, correlation between bad orientation and errors with prints. So you want to make sure that you're optimizing your orientation with the part to make sure it comes out correctly. And more and more CAD software is Creo for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing that Dassault and like Autodesk are dipping their toes in the water with that too. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot uh, more of a it's, common thing. We it's see. kind of a necessity now more yeah. than a nice to have. And yeah. then something else to think of when you're talking about you know, CAD software mm -hmm. actually thinking about 3D printing or additive manufacturing, yep. um, it, it's likely to have the tools or the model checks that could help people get a model ready for printing. I know that's something that I've heard you say, I've heard our engineers say. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little more about the importance of getting your model ready Yes. in the CAD software yep. before you start sending it to a printer? Yeah, it's really important um, that you have your 3D model in the CAD software fully prepared and ready because the thing that you actually print on the printer is going to be what it is from the model. Yeah. So you want to make sure that all your features and geometry, geometry are correct so that that translates into your 3D print. And now, are you meaning like surfaces actually being complete, continuous, yes. and things like that? Yes. Okay. Yep. Otherwise, you can get the little hairline fracture that just makes everything. Yeah, and it's going to print whatever you yeah. model up. So. Okay. I will call out. And Full disclosure, we are a, a, a PTC um, software provider, but full disclosure, Creo is like way ahead of the game when it comes to that stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, um, what do you think is coming next? Are there any things that you've kind of seen on the horizon that, I've that are getting you excited? I've seen that metal 3D printing is becoming a little bit more affordable and accessible, um, although I'd like to see a lot more advancements with that. Um, it's going to be, very common with aerospace engineers um, and also in the automotive industry as well. Yeah, I'm excited to see where that goes. I know uh, I was looking into it recently. I think in another episode we'll be able to dive in a little more on that. Mm -hmm. I'd also love to see um, more application-driven printing. So I'd love to see a bigger variety of materials so that engineers don't have to compromise any features that they're looking for. Okay. And you're saying that as someone that is selling the Form 2 resins, which already have a bunch of engineering. So, like, expand on that a little more. Like, beyond the, the resins that are available, the yep. materials, like, what kind of things are you hoping kind of become commonplace? Um, I would like to see a metal-like material Okay. for a desktop machine. Um, I know there's machines that do have desktop metal machines, like desktop yeah. metal. Um, but even like a metal simulant where it just yeah. simulates like this, the fracture properties and Correct. of metal. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now let's talk about a useful tip or trick or something that we've learned either in our printing because our company has an engineering group that prints mm -hmm. or from one of your customers. Sure. Um, so we actually wrote a blog with one of my customers um, from CPC, Colder Products. Um, his name is Jeff Martin, and he actually has some tips on how to use the form wash um, a little more effectively for washing your parts. Um, so one of the things that he talked about is to add 10 extra minutes to some of the more sticky resins, like the elastic and the tough resin. Um, it just gives you a, a better clean and a better finish when it's done washing. Again, and we're talking about specifically for an SLA printer, like you mentioned, yep. like like the Form 2, but the photo photo sensitive resin yep. printers, not the ones that squirt out plastic. Yeah, not FDM, SLA. Yep. yep. Um, and he also mentioned that he has two form wash machines so that when he washes the first one with the part still on the build platform, and then he takes it out of the wash, removes it from the build platform, removes the support structure, and then he washes the single part in the second form wash bath. 
to get okay. it really clean. Just to get any any resin that might have been in yeah. the, the nooks or the yes. crannies. Okay. And the parts where that the support structure sticks on and you remove all that yeah. and it washes that oh. surface away. That's a good tip. So I'll add a link to that blog sure. in the video. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Everybody check that out. And a huge one more shout out to Jeff Martin from Colder Products, CPC. Um, he's always providing great feedback. Yeah, for sure. Things. All right, now for an exciting part of the, the show, mm -hmm. product updates. Yes. We have a lot of big news. We do. Big news coming at us. Big do. news coming at you. Um, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> First. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> for all Form Labs users, Form mm -hmm. 2 users, yep. there is a new resin out. There is. Elastic resin. Yes. It looks very similar to the clear resin, only you can go like this, and then it pops back. Yeah. So, so tell me more about this new resin, sure. what it's for, um, yeah. and some of the big benefits of it. So it's similar to the flexible resin that some people have already used, except for the fact that it's a lot more elastic and stretchy. Yeah, this, and it it this only moves a little bit and it bounces back very slow. Yes, so this is a Shore 80A durometer, whereas this is a Shore 50A durometer. So it's a lot wow. softer. Look at, look at you sciencing. <laughs> wow. Um, so it's great for medical device, um, pre-surgical planning, that type of thing. Okay, because it's more, it'll respond more like a, a light rubber that mm -hmm. would actually be used in yep. production. Um, I know some other customers using it for soft touch keypads, things like that too. Oh, so. yeah. Uh, does it stay flexible? Will it harden up over time? So far, so good? So kinda? far, so good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So if you're printing anything like overmold grips, yep. um, soft touch keyboards, yep. uh, if you're trying to simulate biological items like this, is this a vein? Artery? Artery. Yep. Artery. Um, and you want to learn more about the actual specs on that resin and what you can get out of it, uh, give a call to Lauren and she will tell you exactly what you can do with it. Yep. All right. I don't know if like, is there drum rolls involved? What, are, <laughs> what should we be doing here? Um, it is time to announce yes. a new printer. And I'm not going to steal her thunder. <laughs> So Lauren, take it away. The Form 3 woo -woo! is finally released. Everyone's been waiting for the Form 3 and we were all right. That's fantastic. Yep. That's fantastic. Everybody was thinking, you know, there was the Form 1, then there was the Form 1 Plus, then there's the Form 2. Where's the Form 3? It's here. We have it. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. What do you know about it? So um, we know that it is, the build volume is just slightly bigger on the z-axis just to maybe like an inch when you say maybe bigger you're referencing something what are you what are you slightly taller than but it's bigger than the form two just very slightly okay yep, yep. very slightly um they use a new advanced version of sla technology it's called lfs and it's low force stereolithography okay and it's exactly what it sounds like it's using lower force to build the model so they use... Where, where was the force in the traditional SLA? So there's forces with um, wipers and how the... The, um, the part. How the part like come, goes yes. up and down. Because I know that yes. sometimes if you're printing things that are kind of suction cuppy, yes, they can exactly. pop off. Is that the so force there's, you're So there's about? a lower okay. force when actually building the model layer by layer. Um, and they, they're designing this for consistency and reliability with your parts and a smoother surface finish. Okay. So the, the finish that you already have with your Form 2, it's going to be even better with the Form 3. Really? Yes. Because like this rigid resin, I'm pretty sure this part is entirely unfinished and I actually, I can't even feel. Yeah. So you're saying it'll be like something I could buy off the Like sh flawless. <laughs> Future episode, you will get a lot of close-ups of parts printed on <laughs> the, the Form 3. Form 3. Mm -hmm. All right, so LFS SLA, we're adding some acronyms. Yep. That's, that's one to pay attention to, low, low force. Stereolithography. All right. Yes. All right. But I'm, I'm super excited. What can you tell me? Do you know anything about um, 
price points or anything like that? Yes. So the price point packages are starting at thirty four ninety nine. Wait, that's the price of the Form Two. Yes. So are they the same price now? They're not. The Form Two is actually dropping. Really? Yes. Yep. The new price of the Form Two is twenty eight fifty. Okay, so for anybody that already has a Form 2 or has been wanting to get one or may want to expand, yes, that's some serious cash. It is. That's excellent. Yeah. All right. Hoops to jump through or a simple phone call to you? Simple phone call to me. And okay. if you have a Form 2, there's an upgrade program that you actually get $500 off of your Form 3. You get to keep both machines, but you get $500 off just for being a loyal customer. They can order, pre-order, I'm guessing now. Pre-order now. Yep. For like three thousand ish dollars, correct, and get the brand new printer. Yes, because they already had the form two. Yes. All right. And because that of that fantastic. deal, yeah, because of that deal, there's going to be a huge waiting list. So we recommend to get on that waiting list now. I I can see that. Yeah. Um, is there an advantage to going? to you instead of getting in the general queue, I'm guessing. Yep, so partners. we're a preferred partner. Yeah, right? and partners generally get a higher up spot on the queue um, just because you're working through us. So definitely reach out to me and I'll make sure that you get a spot. All right, and do we have any idea on ship times? Is that information not released yet? Um, they're starting to ship in June. Okay. So the higher up you are on the list, the quicker you get your printer. All right, so if you want to Get a Form 2 to expand your, your printing setup. Right now, you can save some big money. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yes. Call Lauren. Uh, if you have a Form 2 and want a Form 3, I think the moral of the story was get your name in the queue. Yes. So that you don't have to wait a really, really, really long time. To and that it. discount, I just want to mention, that discount ends June 1st. So you can only save $500 the upgrade, the upgrade on the promotion. upgrade program okay. if you purchase before June 1st. Okay, so if you have a Form 2, call Lauren, get your name in the queue, save a bunch of money. Uh, it seems like everybody wins in that yes. situation. So, um, I think that's it. Is that all the product that's, updates we have? That's what we got for now. All right. First episode in the can. Talk to you next time.